I'm Gareth from Park Cameras and today we're running through five ways to instantly improve your photography this summer. Although, these tips will work at any time of year. So just get out and shoot anytime, all the time. Let's roll some B-roll. <laughs> So let's get straight into it. Tip number one is to pick your time when to shoot. So you want to try and avoid shooting in the midday sun. It's very harsh, very more aggressive sunlight coming down, uh, just beating down is difficult to deal with. It creates a uh, very contrasty look sometimes to things. Um, if you do get shadows, then you get very aggressively contrasty shadows. And it's just it just doesn't make for the best shot um, that you could get. Whereas, if you pick to shoot at something like Golden Hour, which is the time around sunrise or sunset, you're going to get much nicer, softer light. It creates really nice colours in the sky, colours everywhere as well because of the light. Uh, it's just a very nice cinematic looking light and sort of magical look to things. Um, that's a really great time to shoot. The other thing about that is that you can generally, because the light is less harsh, you can use a wider aperture, so you can get some of that nice out of focus elements in the background, or the foreground, stuff like that. Um, and it just creates a much, much nicer shot, much nicer shooting conditions. Uh, so that's definitely worth bearing in mind. Now, I totally understand where you're coming from. You might be saying, Gareth, I'm going out with my friends this weekend. I can't just not shoot in the day because that's when I'm gonna be out, I can't just wait till the evening. And that's totally fair enough, I totally understand what you're saying. Um, there are times when you're gonna be out and it's the middle of the day and the sun is just bah, beating down on you and you can't just not shoot. So there are things you can do to avoid that. So we recently went to London uh, to shoot some stuff and we went to the British Museum and they've got big pillars and stonework and everything and it creates really good natural cover. And what you can do is actually play a little bit with the sun. So um, I got Pete to walk through uh, some of this cover and the sun will just streak across his face. It creates a really nice image. Um, another thing you could do is go somewhere like a forest where you get really nice natural cover um, and you can get things like the sun just poking through the trees and coming down onto your subjects. That can create a really, really great effect. Uh, that's shooting right in the middle of the day. That's fine. Um, in fact, that's ideal because the sun's right at the top of the sky. It's going to be coming straight through those trees and you get now uh, you get sun rays coming through, uh, streaking across people's faces, yeah. So that's something to play with, definitely. But if you can, there's a reason that so many of the photos you see on Instagram are taken at sunset. Um, and that's just because it's a really, really nice looking time of day to shoot. So tip number two is to shoot through things. Um, and basically what that just means is to have something in the foreground, completely out of focus, that's just into the shot, um, not obscuring your subject, but kind of maybe framing your subject um, or, or just poking in. It just creates a lot of depth and it just adds massively to the image. So for example, if you're shooting in the forest, maybe you just back up into the tree line a little bit and you get some of the branches and the leaves coming in in the foreground and they're out of focus, but they create a really nice uh, addition to the image and they create depth because now you've got background out of focus, especially if you're shooting with a wide aperture, background out of focus, subject, and a bit of foreground out of focus. Maybe if there's reeds or, or tall grass, um, you can get some of that waving just in, in the foreground but completely out of focus, especially if you're using a longer focal length as well. Uh, that's, that's great, that's a really nice effect. And that's definitely something to play with. So it just can spice up a slightly less interesting image. Um, so for example, if you're taking a picture of someone uh, working maybe at a cafe, uh, if you can back up and get a little bit of a plant in there as well, that can create a really, really nice image that otherwise would have been slightly less interesting. So tip number three is thinking about your positioning and where you're taking your photo from. So for example, um, I'll down the seafront, there's some nice flowers, some nice flower sort of decoration, everyone's taking a snap and a picture. Um, but what if you move the camera down to the level of the flowers? What if you got into the flowers with the camera and you take it from their level? It changes your perspective and probably gives you a nicer image. In fact, generally, moving your camera to the same level as your subject will often give you a much better result. Um, something else to take into account is if everyone's taking the same picture from the same place of the same thing, Maybe try something else. So for example, everyone's taking a picture of, of the pier uh, from the same place, but what if you go underneath the pier and take a picture from there? Or what if you get on top of the pier and take a picture of the seafront from the pier? 
just something to think about, something to consider is that maybe try just altering your position. Try moving around your subject, um, maybe completely all the way around. Try taking it from different angles and just moving yourself around, moving the camera around to get different perspectives and you might find that you actually end up with a much better shot. So tip number four is trying to tell a story with your photos. So for example, if you've got a really nice landscape, you want to take a picture, click, done, going home, in the bag. But what if you took the time to add something in? So you're in golden hour, you've got really nice colors, really nice light, but what if you put someone in the frame taking a picture of that landscape? And then you've got maybe an out of focus element as well, which you wouldn't have had before, or maybe you, maybe you don't, maybe you shouldn't really uh, small aperture so you get everything in focus, but now you've got a story, now you've got someone taking a picture. If it's a young person, maybe they're coming out getting excited about photography, and rather than just a landscape photo, now you've got someone taking a picture of the landscape. Still got the landscape, still got the sunset colors, still got all that nice stuff, but now you've got a bit of a story element. Um, if you're out and you shoot your coffee while you're in a coffee shop, what if you just position things a little bit differently? So your coffee is now next to your work and you're doing some work at the same time. And now you've got a bit of a story. You're out doing something, having a coffee, rather than just here's a picture of my coffee. Um, it just adds a little bit something to things. And certainly in wildlife you can do it as well. So rather than, a lot of people will have a really close up shot uh, of a bird or something like that, really close up, it's really, really nice and I've, I've got a lot of time for it, but there's also the opportunity sometimes to um, pull back a bit, do a slightly wider shot, get some of the environment in with the animal and maybe even isolate the animal in the environment and just show something and tell a bit of a story like that rather than just a straight shot um, of the subject. So that's definitely something to think about. So tip number five is to be prepared. And I know that sounds super broad and vague, but what I mean by that is, for example, if you're doing something time sensitive, like shooting a sunset or something like that, you don't want to rock up five minutes before, snap, go home. What you want to do, if you're looking up uh, the time of the sunset, and you know where you're going to go. So let's say you look it up, you see the sunset's going to be at 8.40. Um, don't rock up at 8.30, snap, off. Try and get that an hour before. It gives you a chance to explore the environment and work out where you want to take shots from. Maybe because you've got enough time, you can actually get a few different spots. You can try one over here, one over here, and actually get a few different things that you wouldn't have had time for otherwise. Maybe you find something that you wouldn't have seen otherwise. Um, and you end up with more shots and better shots because you took that time to explore and get there early and things like that. And actually, something that happened to me the other night, we went to shoot a sunset, we were gonna get there about an hour before, and on the way, we passed this really old church with these really nice trees outside. It was just lovely, it was in this really old village. And because we had so much time, we were able to stop, get a few photos there, go onto the sunset area, and then come back to the church, still within Golden Hour, and get some more photos, which none of which we'd have been able to do if we were rushing, trying to chase the light sort of thing, and, and uh, which we wouldn't have been able to do it. And it, it's definitely a huge part of photography, especially the time sensitive uh, stuff like sunset. You just want to give yourself more time to breathe, to explore, to take the time with your shots. And you're generally going to have more shots and better shots. So that's definitely worth doing. I hope you found these tips useful. If you've got any tips, share them below in the comments. I'd love to hear about them uh, for summer or any time of year for photography. Any questions, pop them down there as well. And as always, thanks for watching.